Hey everyone. Um, this week I wanted to give you a bit of a hack around planning for your capital portfolio. Um, so some of the work that I do uh, with clients will get into an environment where we've got a whole bunch of projects on the go and we're trying to work out what's the right thing to do. Like where are we spending our time and energy? Um, where's that focus need to be? And so going through that process of making sense of what's the important stuff. Um, because the list is always longer than we have money and time and energy for. That's a constant. Um, and so how do we start to, to get into a place where we're being really effective with the work that we're doing? Um, and I think, you know, there's a lot of IT organisations that are in that place of, um, I guess, what we would call demand-driven. We receive demand and then we respond. Um, and wanting to shift into that place of partnering with the business and being more of an advisory so people you know IT organizations that are going through that sort of hygiene house and order type stage and getting into actually now we want to partner with you because we want to be able to talk to you about the problems that you're having and how technology can solve that rather than you coming at us going here's a piece of kit that I want to put in um, and so I thought it could be helpful to just share kind of the few steps that I go through often um, when I'm starting that process of understanding what's in a client's capital portfolio and um, and how we, we start to line that up with what's really important. Um, we're currently in kind of heading towards the end of the calendar year and I know you know certainly in the US and, and in Europe you often you have that that capital plan um, that's around a calendar year so, so for some of you you're going into those those last kind of three months of like furiously planning what the heck happens in January. Um, for those of us in Australia and New Zealand, it's a little bit further away. You know, we've got March or June to think about, um, and and so it's a little bit further away. But you know, there's there's some steps that you can start to take, depending on where you're at in the cycle. There's some steps that you can start to take that will really start to boost changes that you might want to make in that annual planning cycle. Because um, I think yeah, the reality is that most of us are dealing with some form of annual cycle and trying to work with that to the best of our ability rather than necessarily having permission to go and change all that which is also fun busting up annual planning cycles is great fun um, so what I want to share with you today is a couple of things so first off build forward going back through all of your work and and like retrospectively going through all your ideas and and trying to work out how it all fits that's a really time consuming process it can be a really debilitating process. It can be a really soul-destroying process to try and work out how everything that you've got today fits into where you're trying to go. Because the reality is that as you're starting to cultivate this understanding, it probably doesn't fit. Um, and so that can be a really soul-destroying process. So I think first point is to really encourage you to build forward. So and as much as we would love to change everything that we're doing today and, and, and from tomorrow it would be great and to change all of those things that are kind of hangovers, um, and I get that those hangovers kind of drag us down. Equally, I think the you know the true path to change can often be to build forward because that's what starts to um, to clean out that backlog and that portfolio in the future. And so that over time, those things that are maybe not the way that we want to work or not the things that we want to be doing, over time they start to fall away. And so you build this momentum towards more and more of the right type of work groomed and presented in the right way for teams. So that's kind of the first thing to keep in mind is to, is to build forward. Um, what, so the, the, the kind of the sort of three or four steps that I go through is, um, is I guess first we want to start with visibility. We want to make visible what's important to customers, what matters to customers, what's of value to them, like what's our guiding light look like. That's really important. If you can't get that, then a, a second proxy that I that I will often use, um, particularly with back of house type functions, is to go with strategy. Get whatever you can around company strategy and where you're trying to go. Um, so, depending on what your data source is, the method still works equally. But it's about understanding and identifying what that guiding light is. Like, what is it that you're looking towards to follow? Let's assume. That you've got that end-to-end -end view of customer. Um, so Australia and New Zealand, the pro like the stage that you're at in your process today, 
really great opportunity to go and do some observation work about what matters to your customers and get into understanding and observing what's important to them and what drives value for them so that as you get into the later part of the planning cycle, you can start to line up your ideas around what's actually going to have impact and working on the right things. Um, Europe, US, as you're a little closer to uh, to January, <laughs> um, then potentially you've got ideas that are already coming through, right? And so now you're in the stage of going, well, how do we make a priority call? So step one is to find that guiding light. If you've got the time, go and do the work to understand what's important to customers because that is just going to make your life a whole lot simpler. If you don't have the time to do that, then by all means take strategy, take your current understanding of what's important to customers, take what you've got um, and, and use that. And then making that visible, what you want to start to do is to say, based on this guiding light, what's in, what's out, what are our gaps? So the in and out conversation is a little tricky um, to navigate in the sense that it's quite often that we find that people will shoehorn whatever their thing is into strategy to make it important. Um, that's just the reality. And so that's where I go back to that build forward piece, right? So you will have some things in your portfolio that really clearly demonstrate um, an impact or even a desire to impact a particular set of strategic outcomes or a particular set of customer outcomes and that will be really really obvious they're in they're in bucket number one right line those things up they're in aligned awesome you have a bunch of stuff that people will start to argue and it will start to feel like there's a bit of a long bow to draw between whatever the thing is that we're doing and, and that impact for customer uh, and and this is where I, I, I would sort of encourage you to yes go through those conversations like yes help people to start to get better visibility of what impacts customer or strategy and, and, and definitely work with that. But equally, it's okay not to get too bogged down in that and to go, you know what, some of the stuff just isn't quite going to fit. Um, and, and make some decisions about those things that you're that, you, that are definitely in um, and those things that maybe you're on the fence about but maybe we have to live with. Equally, you will have some things that in no way, shape or form are aligned with or whatever the strategy is, that we've, and that will be really clear as well. So go out and have those tough conversations. Go out and have those conversations about what work are we going to stop as a result of this new guiding light. So step one, guiding light. If you can, do the observation work. Step two, what's in, what's really clearly towards those outcomes. Step three, what's out, go and have some hard conversations because some stuff just doesn't fit. And you've got to be able to cull that to make space for the important work. And then finally, you want to understand what those gaps are. So out of all the work that you've got on your plate towards those outcomes, have we got everything covered? Like have we actually thought of everything? Or are there a bunch of gaps? Are there a bunch of questions? We want to design work that's going to fill those gaps, that's going to help us to experiment, test, and learn towards filling those gaps. Um, and, and equally, if we don't know what that is, even as simply as highlighting those gaps and saying, hey, we've got this strategic or customer outcome, and we know that we've got this gap and we don't know how to fix it, great visibility to have in your portfolio. So I wanted to share that with you today because it's, it's a, it's, I, I know it sounds super simple, um, but equally it's a really powerful tool around getting clarity. You know, I can't tell you the number of times that I've walked into an organization and said, give me a strategy, give me a customer documentation, and we lay it all out in a visual display, starting with company-level strategy on one side, like next column is business unit strategy, working down to team strategy, and then all the projects that we've got going on. And I can't tell you the number of times that simply creating that wall, simply creating that visibility, that big visual anchor, we see massive gaps, like gaping chasms between company strategy and business unit strategy. Like those, those two things just don't relate in any clear way, shape or form. And equally between business unit strategy and the projects that we're doing. And I can't tell you the number of times that we see these huge gaping kind of holes in what we're doing. And, and there's, there's a realisation that goes with that. Um, and some vulnerability that's needed around, ooh, are we working on the right things? 
Um, so I know it sounds super simple, but it's actually a really, really powerful tool around how to start aligning your capital portfolio. So just to recap, step one, guiding light. If you've got time, and by all means you should be creating this time, but go out and get that observational data around what's important to customers and what creates value for them to start to shape your guiding light around customer value rather than strategy. Whole other topic of conversation. Um, then you want to grab all of the work that you've got on your plate and start to look at what definitely hits those hits those buttons, what doesn't, have those hard conversations, and then identify those gaps. Now, if you have customer outcomes that you're looking towards, you're probably going to find that you have a lot more flexibility to start to identify some of those gaps and to start to identify some of those smaller experiments that you can make as to what work you need to do to fill those gaps. That bit gets a little bit trickier if you're working back to strategy because it seems to get a little bit tighter around what we're trying to achieve. Um, there's just something in the customer process that lends itself quite well to, here's a gap, let's go and investigate. So yeah, that was what I want to share with you today. Real simple four steps. Go out, do your work, um, wherever you are in the capital planning process. Um, hopefully this is helpful in terms of your thinking and the way that you're crafting your portfolio and the visibility that you're trying to gain um, in terms of showing the work that you've got on, the impact you're trying to have, how those things link together. Um, and please don't underestimate the just because you've got visibility as a leader or as a project management organisation, a PMO office, just because you've got that visibility doesn't mean that everybody else in the organisation has that ability. So please don't underestimate the power of structuring and making visible the outcomes that we're looking to achieve, really clearly what's in and out and what are those gaps and starting to see that as a whole. So drop me a comment. I hope wherever you are in the world today, you're having an awesome, awesome day and I will see you again next week.